following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Welcome to Gate City Chronicles. I'm Kevin Avard, your host, and today I, I have a really interesting guest, uh, Mr. Greg Hindi. Uh, Greg, I, I want to welcome you to, to the show. To the show. Thanks. Uh, Greg, you have an interesting. Uh, this is probably one of uh, this is up there with some of the interesting pe people that I've, I've ever interviewed. Uh, you got an amazing little journey that you're, you're plotting out here uh, in the next uh, week or so. Yep. And uh, I. I just kind of flabbergasted as to the reason behind it, what you're going to achieve, a myriad of questions. So let's just start off by saying uh, uh, you're 21 years old, yep. graduated high school, uh, valedictorian, and uh, you had some kind of epiphany, some type of something that, that said, you know what, I, I, I want to take a little journey. Tell us a little bit about the journey that you want to take. Well, um, I w attended Yale University, and uh, I studied cognitive science. And uh, about halfway through my uh, four years, I became also really interested in art. And that's led me down the path to where I am today. Um, and I decided that after I graduated, I wanted to spend the next year um, doing an art project that um, maybe is bigger in scale than I could have done back at school. And I decided that um, I wanted to walk across the country and um, take a vow of silence during this time. And the reason I came to this project um, is in part my interest in photography. I've taken a lot of photography courses and um, am very interested in continuing with photography. And also um, my interest in performance art. And um, specifically, I found the work of a Taiwanese artist, Derching She, um, who did a series of one-year-long performances. Um, to be really compelling, and I thought that a walk across the country in silence would be uh, a good tribute and counterpoint to some of his work. Now, uh, Der Ching Che, yeah. uh, did he do his art in silence? Well, he, um, he did a series of performances, and some of them did involve um, silence, but all of them involved significant amounts of deprivation um, of specific things. He, his first one year performance in the 70s was um, one year in solitary confinement um, in a cage that he built within his studio. And he sat there and basically spent a year thinking to himself. And he, um, he had no uh, a rule that was no speaking, no um, listening to the radio or television, or um, reading or writing. Could he come in and out of the cage, or was he just... He was sealed in the cage for exactly one year, and he had the cage itself um, shut with stamps that he had a lawyer sign, and the lawyer came back one year later to confirm that that the stamps had not been broken, and thus he couldn't have. OK, so there are all kinds of questions, like what did that cage smell like? Yeah, after well, a year? he had um, a friend who helped him 
uh, clean out the cage once a day. He um, left his waste and whatnot to be um, cleaned out, and he had meals brought to him. Um, but other than that, he sat in silence. And um, the project, I think, is in a way very existential, and um, it kind of, you know. What did he achieve with that? Well, I think what he achieved uh, was, I mean, what I think is he achieved a great work of art. Um, he had himself photographed each day and, um, and also vicariously throughout the year as he, um, you know, sat in silence. And he, he spoke about his goal of wanting to, um, to make his, essentially his thinking into his artwork. And so he thought, well, what if I simply think? What if I just sit and do nothing else and um, bill it as a work of performance art? And it's not um, really far from the norm within performance art. Um, our other artists like Marina Abramovich have uh, become widely popular with similar um, a similar style of uh, deprivation and endurance. Well, we've heard, uh, you know, you have your cloistered nuns, you have the Stoics from way, way back, where, where people, you know, would uh, deprive themselves. And, and there was, was more of a spiritual type of um, uh, end to it. Yeah. This, this is, I think, probably one of the first time I've, I've ever heard of it being more of an art form. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, in a way it is religious, uh, but it's, it's about art. I right. mean, it's about treating uh, art like a religion and Did he living. write about it? I mean, I mean, he didn't just sit there and not write or read, or, or did he just sit? He really, truly just sat, didn't write or read, um, and had it documented photographically. Um, and I, I think that the reason he left a lot of it um, open-ended in a way, and uh, it leaves the viewer wondering, you know, how hard it was, what he was thinking about. Um, I think that that's just so that the viewer really can uh, put themselves into it and try to get something from it. It comes to mind a, a, a biblical verse that says that no man could, you know, every beast of the field has been tamed, but no man can tame the time. That's got to be one of the hardest beasts in this world to tame and to be able to keep your, your tongue in check, let alone be quiet. Well, I think that um, in the silence, you know, he's, uh, his goal really is to make a bigger statement than he could with words. And so um, in a way, it's, it's putting, the silence, um, putting the silence there in order to communicate um, you know, more well, words than, than he could otherwise. Now, this is really the first I've ever heard of him. Um, what did, after he, he broke his silence, he, what, what came next? Uh, after he finished the, um, the one year in um, solitary confinement, he did a few other one year long performances in which he um, deprived himself of other um, other aspects of life. So right after that, a few months later, he began possibly his toughest uh, performance in which he spent one year every hour on the hour hitting um, a time clock. And he could never sleep for more than an hour because he had to wake up and be in his studio to hit the time clock. And he could never leave his studio it, uh, you know, more than a half hour if he can't get back in time to hit the time clock, uh, 24 hours a day. And the, um, every time he hit the time clock, it just took a little picture of him. And by the end of the year, it was a six minute film. Um, you know, I think it was eight millimeter film. Um, really <laughs> incredible performance, but um, I think that I think that what draws me to the performance is uh, just how how much it clearly means to him, how much uh, dedication it takes to um, put into a single idea, 
and to go at it throughout the year, to not doubt it. It takes even a lot as of it, focus. Even as it gets hard, you know, to, uh, to really believe in what you're doing. And that's, I mean, that's faith, I guess. So, yeah, yeah. so let's get into you now. The, you're, you're going to do something similar. You're going to walk across the country in uh, absolute silence uh, with all the potential hazards of doing such. We, you're going to be walking. You will be taking photographs. Will it be of yourself? Or will it be of, of the country or a little bit of both? What, what, what's going to be the subject matter? Uh, the subject matter will be both of myself and of the country. Um, I mean, in a year, I want to take a lot of photographs. And I'm interested in documenting the performance aspect of it, mm -hmm. uh, my experience, and um, you know ha what I go through, if I can um, communicate it through photographs. You know, that would be nice. But I also want to um, communicate what I see. And I think that photography is really about a way of seeing. And I wonder just how does someone see if um, the only way they can communicate their experiences through images. So when you go to Europe, you go to Great Britain, and you see those soldiers with those nice funny hats, they're usually a target. People will go up to them and try to make them smile or make them talk or do something. Do you think that's going to happen to you along the way? Uh, I think that um, as you know, people who realize that I've taken a vow of silence, so that would be anyone who approaches me and I show them a flashcard that uh, lets them know. I think that um, some people definitely will. Are you prepared uh, for that? I guess is that's what I'm worried yeah, about. Yeah, I think I, I'm prepared for it in that I expect it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that there's not much to really do about that other than, you know, always be polite. And right. um, I think that the, I really don't think that um, anyone is going to treat me too badly if I'm. Uh, if I'm only looking to, you know, walk on through and uh, spread my message, I guess. In a peaceful way, obviously. Yes. <laughs> Will you have companions along the way with you? Um, I don't have any uh, plans for companions, um, but I'm not against. Uh, I'm not against people walking with me. If I. You know, I ask you that. This, this whole vision of Forrest Gump comes to mind. Yeah, you know, a lot he's of running, people and say that. All of that. a sudden, he's, he's quiet, he's just running along, and all of a sudden, there's another runner, and there's another runner. And is it possible that uh, you could find 100 or 1,000 people walking with you? I mean, that's entirely possible. Um, you would not, you it would, would not discourage it. Though. I wouldn't discourage it. I think that um, the, you know, with uh, being an artist, it's about responding to uh, what happens. You know, I have an idea, and so I'm going to go out and do it and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And that's where the art is, is um, you, the unexpected and... Uh, Weather concerns. Well, uh, of course, I'm definitely concerned about weather. Um, as far as planning for it, uh, I'll obviously have... Um, you know, different clothing for different weather, and planning out my route um, is uh, in part based on weather. I plan on um, going south uh, and then um, crossing the southern states during the winter, and in the spring heading north to California. Um, uh, I also plan on uh, daily weather, um, simply trying to get uh, a weather forecast from, I'm not going to have any technology that I can check the weather with day to day. Oh, I didn't so, know that. Okay, so you're um, going to be going without a, a cell phone. Without a cell phone. I will have a cell phone uh, as an emergency, um, but not as a convenience. So Money. Money. I have actually already raised all the money for the project, um, both through a grant that... Um, I received for the project from um, through Yale, 
and also I raised eight thousand dollars on uh, Kickstarter. Okay, so fantastic. Where does your walk begin? Begins in Nashua uh, at my house. So uh, it'll begin in Nashua on July 9th, and you have a press release for that, or there'll be a, 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 a well fanfare, or you have a, a number of followers that'll be there with you. Uh, Right now, I think I just want to uh, be there with my family, and um, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a video though um, right before I leave, in which I uh, essentially say my last words, and um, it'll be a, you know a statement that I'll prepare, and I'm going to halfway through the video begin the vow of silence, um, go silent, let the tape run at, you know run down and post the video online and then leave so um, people will be able to see the see my last words posted uh, <coughs> when I leave and I will do a follow-up when I finish will there be any checkpoints for you to uh, document your travels uh, it, that you can say okay well uh, you know, uh, Greg's at mile marker such and such. Um, hello, family. You know, with a little little card. Hello. Will you will you be able to post that at all? I know you said you're not going to have electronics, but will there be like stations for you to well, stop at a Starbucks or something? And so I will have um, the one electronic that I'll be using is a debit card. And right now, the plan is that I will use the debit card as often as possible. Um, once a day, if I can, you know, every other day, whenever I get the chance to um, get a debit card logged on, and my parents will be able to check my bank account um, throughout the year right, the and watch way. as I cross the country, and um, they will they will also be receiving um, film that I'll be sending home and. Um, That'll be about once a week, and obviously it'll be postmarked from where I sent it. So those are the two forms of uh, communicating my location. How heavy is your load that you're going to be carrying? Uh, so right now, the plan is that I'll have a backpack of about 25 pounds and a um, uh, essentially a trailer that uh, it's two-wheel. It looks somewhat like a dolly. And it's designed actually to be pulled by, by a bike, but um, I'll be pulling it by hand, and that will have another um, about 50 pounds food and water included. Usually, daily rations. So you'll stop someplace and get something yeah. along the way. That's interesting. Um, a wheel breaks. Are you prepared for that? Uh, I am prepared. Um, I I mean one plan. So. I can manage without the dolly itself um, for some short distance, but um, the plan for uh, needing any replacement parts is um, to find the uh, nearest place where I can get on the internet and just order what I have to order. <laughs> yeah, very good. So, I'm sure you've thought this through. I'm just, I'm, I'm looking at all the potentials. I, I, yeah. I imagine. Uh, you know, you're gonna have some pepper spray in case of a bad dog or something like that. Yeah, or? I'm going to uh, carry bear spray, so it's like a high power pepper spray. Yeah. Will you be and going through very uh, populated areres, both populated, little, non populated? A little, a little bit of both, but mostly rural areas. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be stop, you know, passing through a few cities along the way, um, but I'll be um, on interstate roads that are not freeways. So right. the sort of country roads that um, will go for hundreds of miles at a time. Will you log a journal every day? No, I actually am not going to be reading or writing. Um, I am, one thing that I will likely be doing is using the photographs as a way of remembering and um, the camera that I'm using, it's a, uh, it's called a four by five inch uh, field camera. And it's a very slow, 
um, old-fashioned looking camera. It's mm -hmm. made of wood, has bellows, right. and uh, shoots one picture at a time. Um, the slow process of the camera involves a lot of setup, a lot of um, consideration, and because of that, it, um, it's easy, really easy to remember what, why you took a picture, what you were thinking about, and I'm interested in seeing what I can remember of the year simply journaling with photographs. So that's a year's worth of pictures that you're going to be carrying. I, will they be stored along the way, or will you carry them? I fear, you know, my gosh, you just, a tornado. You're in the wrong spot, and you can't hike it out of there quick enough. Yeah, so. So there are, you know, there's, obviously you're, you know, you're healthy looking, but weather, something could happen to the, is there a way to protect those pictures? Um, well, I'm going to mail them back, uh, you know, pictures I've taken as often as possible. And so hopefully at least once a week, I'll be able to put something in the mail and uh, back to my parents and they can store them. And I'm going to be picking up film at different uh, drop points along the way mm -hmm. um, that I'm currently arranging. And those will be uh, spots that I am definitely going to head to. So they'll just be uh, Drop both points. Yeah. checkpoints yeah. for my journey and also ways to uh, refuel on film and um, what will, leave behind. What will be some of your subject matter that you think you're going to want to document? Uh, I'd say everything. I want to <coughs> document people. Um, I'm definitely going to ask people uh, who are interested in the project to if I can photograph them. I'm interested in the types of people that uh, can, can get something from it, can empathize with the silence maybe, and can, um, you know, are supportive of the idea. And I'm also interested in photographing the changing landscape, the, sure. um, you know, the different things along the side of the road that I see. You probably said this, and I, it probably slipped my mind, but is it going to be color or black and white? Um, it's mostly going to be black and white and uh, some color. Color film is significantly more expensive. Um, and it also, with black and white, it allows me to develop it by myself, by hand, afterwards. And um, I think that's an, a real benefit. So it will be black and white unless I think that uh, color is necessary for the specific photo. Emotionally, when people are isolated, that, has, that, that can really bring trauma to uh, your spirits. Yeah. And you're, you're self-inflicting yourself. Have you prepared for that? And if so, how did you do that? Well, I'd say that um, I've been preparing for it a long time, I think. I... Throughout this past year, I've become interested in performance. And um, for instance, I did a 36-hour performance in which um, I was locked in my room and um, fasting while working on. Uh, That's typical teenage stuff. Yeah. Just, <laughs> so I, I've done so similar sorts of endurance things. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I come from a background of distance running, and uh, I've always had an interest in these sorts of uh, endurance challenges. And I think that um, I, th I think I'm drawn to the uh, the psychological challenge of the walk. So I guess I'd say I I might be I might be suited for it in a way, mm -hmm. and. Um, it'll be the biggest challenge I've, I've had yet, but, um, but I guess the, the struggle is that's where the art will happen. Well, if people want to talk to you or email you, will you be able to at least at, at certain checkpoints check in and say, hey, uh, hi? Uh, fortunately, I won't be able to uh, write back okay. until the end of the year. I, um, will you be able to at least look at that? Or? Well, I'm... Uh, Right now, I'm going to have a friend 
just man my email address and um, answer any questions to the best of his abilities. Mm -hmm. Knows a lot about the project and about me, so mm -hmm. um, he probably could answer most people's questions. Do you want to publicize your email for people to, to at least contact you? Uh, yeah, anyway? yeah. What would that be? Um, you can contact me at hindi, H-I-N-D-Y dot greg, uh, G-R-E-G, at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And um, that'll, that'll be, uh, your emails will be answered. So when you, uh, when you make it to the Jimmy Kimmel Show and, and all these other <laughs> shows, just remember us here at Gate City Chronicles. Of course. And, and your local neighbors here in Na Nashville, New Hampshire. But uh, I wish you uh, the best. And uh, is there anything else you want to tell our, our viewers at all before you? Um, yeah, I'd like to say that they can find out more information about the project okay. if they Google Greg Hindi Walking Silence. Um, a couple, there are articles written about it. and um, the Nashua Patch did something on you as well recently? Yep, okay. and the Kickstarter page, which will be the first thing that'll come up, is where I will be posting the video to and um, where my parents will be posting updates on my location so that people can watch it happen. And um, that'll be up all throughout the year. Well, we wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. And thanks for watching uh, Gate City Chronicles. And get in touch with Greg if, uh, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about uh, this, this new art form. Uh, check it out. And uh, may your, your, our prayers be with you and Godspeed that you be protected along the way. Thank you. So thanks for watching Gate City Chronicles. We'll see you next week. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.